So welcome to the last part of today's lecture on the characteristic equation. So I wanted to kind of finish up with kind of uh, an example with a little bit more going on, a little bit more complexity. So in this example, I have my matrix A. It's a three by three matrix, and I've already told you what the determinant of this matrix is. So I've worked it all out beforehand. Now, because I've given you the characteristic polynomial, uh, and it has a particularly nice form, I can write out what the eigenvalues are, and they are lambda equals one. And the thing to pay attention to is that the multiplicity uh, is two. So that's the multiplicity is two. And the other one is lambda is equal to two, which is the multiplicity is one. Okay, so now what I wanna do is kind of show you something that can happen when you're looking for eigenvectors. So let's look at the case in more detail of lambda equals one. So how do we do this? Well, we just follow the same procedure in, in the last uh, part. And what we're trying to do is, first we set up the matrix A minus the eigenvalue times the identity matrix, the size three. So you get this matrix right here. You should double check that I did this right. And you get a homogeneous system of equations and you're trying to solve, or well, not trying, you're supposed to solve this system of linear equations. So there's the augmented form. And you notice that each of the two rows are actually all scalar multiples of the first row. So it reduces to this matrix right here. So this is the row reduced echelon form. There's a lot of zeros in this matrix. And what we get here is that x2 and x3 is free. So we do our usual trick, right? We set x2 to be s, and we set x3 to be t. And then so the first equation becomes x1 minus x2 minus x3 equals 0. So this tells me that x1 is equal to x2 plus x3, which is equal to s plus t. So what we have here is we can write it like this. So the solutions to the system of equation are x1, x2, and x3. And we have that we get, let's just put all the values in. x1 is s plus t, x2 was s, and x3 was t. And we can break it up as s times the vector one, one, zero and plus t times the vector one, zero, one, okay? And notice that regardless of the s and t here, you actually have freedom to pick s and t, and the resulting vector is an eigenvector if s uh, equals t doesn't equal zero. So as long, um, oh, I didn't say that precisely mathematically correct here, let's fix that, if s, and t both not zero, both not zero, or not both zero. Oh, sorry, but not both zero. Okay, so this is an eigenvector. So I can put, s could be zero, but as long as t is a non-zero number, we get an eigenvector. So we're getting all scalar multiples of our linear combinations of these two vectors. So another way to think about what's happening here is that the eigenspace is actually a span of two vectors. And these two vectors are linearly independent. So what we're getting in this particular example is the eigenspace of lambda equals one is a two-dimensional subspace of R2. And this is our basis for our eigenspace right here. So this is a basis for the eigenspace. And one thing that you should notice is we found two things in our basis and the number of elements in our basis is equal to the multiplicity of lambda equals one, okay? Now a, a huge warning here, this is not always true. But 
there is a relationship between the number of basis elements of your eigenspace and the multiplicity of your eigenvalue. Normally, this will be an inequality, and we're going to get into all these details in the in the next couple of lectures when we talk about diagonalization. So, the the key point here, though, you want to talk about or notice here is when you're looking for um, eigenvectors, sometimes you may find a whole family, and it could be a large family. In this case, it's a two-dimensional family of vectors that, satis that are eigenvectors for the eigenvalue lambda equals one. Okay, so hopefully that example is a little bit illuminating. Before we head off, I thought it would be good to also point out that yes, you can uh, find all this information using Octave. You can compute this, but you have to be a little bit of pay a little bit of attention about what kind of information you're getting. Right? So I've written the commands here, but before I go through the commands, let's just, just go over um, to Octave and I show you how it works. So here's the matrix A that we've been looking at. So it's right down here at the bottom, 2772. And let's say I just put in the command IA, as you might expect. It should give you the eigenvalues, and it does. It gives you them in a column vector, so minus 5 and 9. So these are actually the eigenvectors that you found. But what about the eigenvectors? Well, to get a hold of the eigenvectors, we're going to use this command. Okay, square bracket v, comma d, square bracket, equal to ia. And when we hit enter, what you're getting as output is two matrices. So you get a matrix v, and you're getting a matrix d. D is always going to be a diagonal matrix where the diagonal entries are going to be the eigenvalues, right? So minus five and nine are still the eigenvalues. And then the corresponding, since negative five is in the first column, the first matrix is the eigenvector associated to minus five. And the second column is the eigenvector associated to the eigenvalue in the second column of D. So Octave gives you these um, eigenvectors here. And that doesn't look like anything that we found in our example, right? So let's go back to right here. So for minus five, we found negative one, one. And for lambda equals nine, we found one, one. But you notice that we are in the bot, we are right because the vectors here are the same vectors up to a scalar multiple. And what Octave is doing is actually it's rescaling each of the uh, eigenvectors so that it has norm or length one. So we learned about the length of a vector uh, when we talked about Grant Schmidt. So it's picking the eigenvector that also has the additional property that its length is one. So I've summarized kind of what I just said here in my notes here, go over here. So IGA will just give you a column vector whose entries are the eigenvalues. And then this is what, how to get a hold of the eigenvectors as well. Okay, so there's a lot of kind of good information in today's lecture. Some of the key ideas is the characteristic equation. And some of the other things that we found is like, or kind of practiced was finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So that's it for today's lecture. In the next lecture, when we get to lecture 30, we're going to do start talking about the diagonalization of a matrix. Until then.